<sighs> okay, welcome everyone to the third part of pediatric. So now, your child has ALL and you refuse uh, his treatment. So what should I do? I think uh, this one you should... Either you get a court order or, you know, to still do it because, Excellent. you know, yeah. Court yeah. order, yeah. Court order, yeah. What are the features mm. of child abuse? Oh, I know about, you know, spiral fracture. If there is a spiral fracture, if there is a conjunctival um, hemorrhage, if there is, uh, like, um, you know, some marks like coin marks or sit uh, belt sign you know things like that and then um, a lot of other stuff <laughs> yeah drug or alcohol abuse mm -hmm. psych condition depression impulsive behavior this caregiver mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. single mom non-biological caregiver so that's Home environment is unstable, family situation like divorce, financial difficulty, oh. social isolation, victim, there is a pre-existing medical, psychological or de developmental disorder, mostly. Mm -hmm. clinical, those are the risk factors, okay, clinical presentation, unexplained injury, bruises, fractures, trauma, injuries in different stages of healing, forced ingestion or intentional poisoning, of child okay. sudden behavioral changes in child change in uh, scholastic performance so that's those types of things that the child abuse okay now if you're a three-year-old girl when I palpate your radial head elicit mild tenderness click is felt when the forearm is hyperpronated and the child stops crying and start to use her arm, mm -hmm. what is that? Nos, nos made elbow. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, it's a fracture of the radio head. Yeah, Oops, um, not fracture. Um, dislocation of the radio yeah, head. Yeah, radial head subluxation. Mm -hmm. Mechanism is axial traction on forearm with elbow extended, like child pulled, lifted, or swung by an arm. Mm -hmm. Physical exam, the arm held in extended and pronated position. No swelling, deformity or focal tenderness. Treatment, supination of the forearm and flexion of the elbow or hyperpronation of the forearm. Okay, let me just one second, let me... T okay, let's continue. So now, if you're a six-year-old boy with pain on your left hip and left knee, Internal rotation and abduction of the left hip are markedly limited. So what is your diagnosis? Is it a uh, leg cafe? Leg like, yeah, leg, leg calf's perthus disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> now, if you're a 16-year-old boy, okay, who, uh, who had pain in joint and in different joint and feeling feeling more tired than usual okay you spent the summer at the soccer camp in Maine now your right knee is limited flexion and extension x-ray is normal when I do aspiration of synovial fluid I found leukocyte 20,000 and CSF on CSF no no of synovial fluid Oh, synovia fluid, okay. Synovia fluid, okay. Yeah, not cerebrus. Go ahead. Yeah, so what's your diagnosis? Leukocyte 16,000. 20,000. 20,000, okay. With pain. Of course, it's not septic arthritis. Septic, septic arthritis will be greater than 50,000. So there is, you see, the pain in different joints on and off. What do we call that? So that would be um, uh, gonococcal arthritis. No. 
Is it? I don't know. Yeah, but this vision had a risk factor that he went to Maine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it could be other causes of migratory arthritis is li Lyme. Uh -huh. Lyme disease, yeah. yeah. So Lyme, but how long though? What was the time frame? For the arthritis? Mm -hmm. In Lyme disease. Yeah, so he had first noticed it. So he had right knee swelling. He first noticed it today. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, let me see the timing. On the past few months, mm. he has been running and lifting weight more frequently. But that's about it. They didn't mention the timing much. Okay, six okay. months ago, he was in, okay. in summer. Okay, uh, so that camp. makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. If it's six months ago. Oh, so those are the substance. So there is the clinical manifestation of Lyme disease. There is early localized, which is days to one month after a tick bite, which is erythema migraine, 80% of patients, fatigue, malaise, lethargy, mild headache, neck stiffness, myalgia, arthralgia, okay? And there is early disseminated weeks to months after a tick bite, for example, carditis, in 5% of untreated patients, AV block, cardiomyopathy, and there is a neurologic, which is 15% of untreated patients. They have unilateral or bilateral cranial nerve deficit, usually eighth cranial nerve, meningitis, encephalitis, and muscular problem, cause migratory arthralgia, conjunctivitis in 10% of patients, but muscular dysmigratory arthralgia in 60% of patients. Skin, multiple erythema migraine, this is an early disseminated, regional or generalized lymphadenopathy. And there is the late or chronic, which is months to years after tick bite. Uh, there is the muscular that's present with uh, arthritis, and there is the neurologic encephalomyelitis or peripheral neuropathy. Those sorts of things, okay? So this is the presentation of Lyme disease. Okay. Okay, now, if you're a seven-year-old boy who complained of left hip pain for the past eight months, okay, over recent weeks, you developed a limb, and there's limited range of motion and atrophy of the left proximal thigh. What is that? Atrophy, or uh, is it like avascular necrosis? Yeah, excellent. This is osteonecrosis. Osteonecrosis, yeah. Yeah, lump and atrophy of the left proximal thigh. Now, okay, just just one second. So, what are the complications of Kawasaki? Kawasaki will be one of the big ones is um, 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 carotid artery aneurysm, right? Yeah. And then what else? That's the big one. Yeah, that's the big one. Okay. Now. What um, else? Yeah, that's the most important one. That's what I want. Yeah, okay, so now, if you are a 18-year-old, previously healthy boy who developed, for the past two months, left leg pain that's dull and aching over the left thigh that occurs mostly at night and improved with ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. Examination is normal, no redness or focal tenderness. So what is that? Osteoid osteoma. Excellent, wow, good job. So you know, the, in the question, they made it easier by giving the x-ray, which is on, oh, they on did. Oh, okay. skinning, yeah, but you're smart that you figured it out without it. Okay, now, just a second, this, this, this is a huge book that I'm having. Let me just a second, let me just grab this pen. Okay. 
Now, if you were a three week old Asian girl who presented with a left inguinal fold extend posteriorly beyond the anal orifice. Left inguinal fold? Yeah, extend posteriorly beyond the anal orifice and there appears to be a leg length discrepancy. Mm -hmm. Skin exam shows non-blanching blue-gray mm -hmm. macule with indefinite borders over the sacral gluteal region. Rest mm -hmm. of the exam is normal. What's next step? Um, so it's three uh, weeks. So this one will be ultrasound. Hip, uh, what do you call it? Hip uh, dysplasia or hip dislocation. Yeah, excellent. Ultrasound. So the screening for development dysplasia of the hip, age 0 to 12 months, when you have physical examination at each well child visit, you gotta do that. You do ba so you do Barlow or Artalini. If that positive, then you refer to orthopedic. But if you just have asymmetry with negative Barlow or Artalini, just asymmetric fault, then you look at the age. If it's two weeks to six months, then you order ultrasound. But what if the patient more than four months? What do you do? Then you do um, X-ray. Yeah, hip X-ray. Yeah. Smart. Okay, now if you are a 13-year-old male who have intermittent left knee pain, that's tired. how old? 13-year-old male. Mm-hmm. Who had intermittent left knee pain? Started three months ago. On physical exam, you have edema and tenderness over the proximal tibia at the site of patellar tendon insertion. Your knee pain is reproducible by extending the knee against resistance. What do we call that? What's your diagnosis? Hmm. Left knee pain times three months, swelling, and then what else again? <laughs> Sorry. So pain reproducible by extending the knee against resistance. This is called traction apophysitis. It's also traction what? Apophysitis, which is Osgood Schlatter disease. Oh, okay. Okay, you have hmm. tenderness over the proximal tibia at the site of patellar tendon insertion. That's how they present edema and tenderness at patellar tendon insertion and intermittent knee pain in a 13 year old male. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a very typical presentation, important one. Now, if you're an 11 year old African American boy, mm -hmm. okay, you started cruising but not yet walking. 11 when, months? Yeah. Bony prominence of the costochondral junction are noted bilaterally and genovarum is present. So what is your diagnosis? Um, uh, is, um, what do you call it? Um, is rickets. Yes. Vitamin D deficiency. Yeah, it's vitamin D deficiency. So what are the risk factors for vitamin D deficiency? I know they said, um, when you are exclusively breastfeed a child, that can happen. Yeah, inadequate sun exposure to then, maternal yeah, vitamin D deficiency, increased skin mm -hmm. pigmentation. So those are risk factors and exclusive breastfeeding. That's a good. One. How do they present? They present with cranial tapes, ping pong ball skull, delayed frontal closure, and enlarged skull frontal bossing. Mm -hmm. and costochondral joint, rectic rosary, mm -hmm. and you have long bone joint, wrist widening, and genovarum. X-ray, you have osteopenia, and metaphysial cupping, and the frying, and epiphysial widening. On labs, you have normal or low calcium, normal or low phosphate, but alkaline phosphatase will be high and parathyroid hormone will be high and 25-hydroxyvitamin D will be low. <sighs>
Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the rickett like vitamin D deficiency. Now, if you're a six-year-old female with Down syndrome, you felt dizzy and developed urinary incontinence, and you have dizzy. Yeah, yeah, you felt dizzy, urinary incontinence, hypotonia, hyperreflexia, positive Babinski reflex. What's causing that in Down syndrome? Um, any temp? Huh? Any temperature? No. Hmm. Mm, Down syndrome, I don't know. So, Down syndrome, they have atlantoaxial instability. Mm -hmm. Occurred in 10 to 15 percent of Down syndrome. Due to excessive laxity of the posterior transverse ligament, which causes an increased mobility between atlas and axis. That's why you have these neurological symptoms. Okay? It's a scary condition. Most neurological conditions are scary. Okay, now if you are a three year old boy with a th four plus proteinuria. So. You treat with a steroid, right? It's a minimal change disease. You How many year old? Three year old. Uh huh. On what? Hmm. Well, presented with four, uh, four plus proteinuria. Okay. Okay. So this is minimal change disease. So you treat it with a prednisone. Mm hmm. Okay, but how do you diagnose it? Um, I guess you know when you do the electron microscopy, it's gonna be uh, normal. And then, um, yeah, the yeah, electron microscopy is going to be normal. Yeah, normal microscopy, hypoalbuminemia, proteinuria. Then. Mm. Clinical feature, they have fatigue, edema without hematuria, okay. Epidemiology, most common nephrotic in children. And the median age, what is the median age? Is 2 to 3 is 85% of the cases occur before 10 years old okay and the median age is 2 to 3 years old what is the pathogenesis of the pathogenesis mm -hmm. or the prognosis mm -hmm. pathogenesis yeah pathophysiology it's idiopathic or it could be to T lymphocyte mediated cause increased molecular permeability to albumin so that's the thing okay. okay now if you're a 16 year old girl who had a two day mm. burning sensation with voiding mm -hmm. okay so and positive leukocyte esterase you know I feel Ashamed asking this question. Like it's why? <laughs> it's a simple UTI. Like it's an easy one. Yeah, it's E. coli most common. So you diagnose it with urinalysis and urine culture. Yeah, you just gotta know between cystitis and pyelonephritis. Cystitis, dysuria, hematuria, and pyelonephritis. They have nausea, vomiting, and flank tenderness. Flank tenderness, and they can have cystitis symptoms too. So you gotta be spinophritis cystitis plus kidney infection. So that's the thing. Yeah, this is an easy question. I shouldn't ask that. It's simple. It's I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now. No, here's the good stuff. Boom, boom, boom. Good stuff. So pyloric stenosis. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what do you think it's gonna happen to the chloride and potassium? So this is a metabolic. Uh, what do you call it? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What um, is respiratory alkalosis? So if it's oh, is it respiratory alkalosis? Vomiting? No, metabolic al alkalosis. What am I saying? So with metabolic alkalosis, the pH is gonna be low. No, no, no. pH is going to be high. It's alkaline. 
Um, you say what is going to happen to the chloride? Chloride will be low. What else are you asking? How Potassium about will be low. HCO3. Uh, bicarb will be high because it's alkalosis. Yeah, so because it's due to vomiting, so you will mm -hmm. lose gastric HCL. So that's mm -hmm. in initiate metabolic alkalos alkalosis and hypochloremia. Mm -hmm. And this and there is also loss of Na chloride and H2O. Mm -hmm. With vomiting, you, like uh, you lose water and sodium, so you cause hypovolemia. Mm -hmm. So when you have hypovolemia, there will be decreased renal perfusion. So n now the angiotensin bodies they will jump in. The RAS system. Yeah, the RAS causes increased aldosterone, causes increased case secretion, that's why you have hypokalemia. Okay, and causes increased edge secretion too, that's why it worsens the alkalosis. Okay, and it increases HCO3 reabsorption. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. It's a good case, interesting one. Now, if you're a newborn with bilateral hydrocephalus, and flattened faces and abdominal distension. Bilateral hydro, uh, hydro what? Nephrosis? Hydrocephalus? Sorry, sorry. Hi, so hydronephrosis, <laughs> flat faces, <laughs> abdominal distension, and club feet. Mm -hmm. What is that? Pora sequence? Yeah, it's, it's caused by urinary tract anomaly because oliguria and urea. Oligidromania, mm -hmm. and there is so there's not much fluid, so the face will be compressed causing flat faces, limp deformity too. Hmm. And the lung will be compressed too, causing pulmonary hypoplasia. Such an unfortunate thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're a five-year-old boy with edema, fatigue, abdominal pain, blood pressure is 92 over 55, protein is 4 plus. Mm -hmm. What's your diagnosis? Yeah, minimal change. Yeah, minimal. Now, if you're a 23-year-old girl with a blood pressure of 96 over 60, pulse is 130. So what do you think about this vitals for a 23-year-old? It's in unstable. Huh? Maybe. I say it's unstable. Unstable vital signs. Something is going on. There is suprapubic tenderness, left costal vertebral angle tenderness, and the urinalysis shows bacteria plus positive. So what is what do you do next step? So if that is the case, okay, you said left quadrant pain. Yeah. And Just then over the CVA tenderness. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this is um, a pilo. So for this patient, you have to one admit to the hospital. And then you obtain a blood culture and urine culture before you give uh, antibiotics. Yeah, and you gotta do ultrasound renal and bladder because what are the indications for renal and bladder ultrasound? Um, okay, for this will be if they have uh, this uh, complicated pyelonephritis, you know, if they have high, uh, okay, of course, you don't know if they have hydro, if they have a history of kidney stones, if they have um, some of these other things that I learned, <laughs> like last week. So they have infant and children less than 24 months with first febrile UTI. We do ultrasound. Or oh, is that what you're asking? This person is 23. Are you asking for an adult? Or are you asking for a child? First, like first child, and any child with recurrent UTI, you do ultrasound. Yeah. So you, what you said was right, but that's more. I'm telling you, that's one that specific for kids, and UTI in a child of any age with a family history of renal, urologic disease, hypertension or poor growth and children who do not respond to appropriate antibiotic treatment mm -hmm. so those are the indications for renal and bladder ultrasound now if you're a seven-year-old boy 
uh, who brought you to persistent bed wedding okay parents tried alarms gold stars then they're frustrated okay the boy is sad about missing summer camp <clears throat> and sleeping over and his parents are frustrated everybody's frustrated oh, what's going on what should we do now so if they have tried the alarm symptoms you know if any of those one did not work then you can do uh, medication now yeah uh, excellent so <clears throat> so the definition of monosymptomatic isolated enuresis is that urine incontinence in children more than five years old workup we do urinalysis urologic imaging for children with significant daytime symptoms and history of recurrent UTI. So that's the thing. How do we treat it? First, behavioral modification, like avoid sugary and caffeinated beverages. Avoid regularly during the day and immediately before bedtime. Drink ample fluid in the morning and early afternoon. Minimize it before bedtime. And reward system, like the gold star chart. If that didn't work, then we jump to the second level, which is neurisis alarm. Is the first line when the behavioral modification fail. So not the first line is alarm. First behavioral, then alarm, and then the third one is pharmacologic. <clears throat> which one is the which, first line? Is the pharmacologic? Um, they have a. I think is it desmopressin or something like Excellent. that. Excellent, desmopressin, and the second line is tricyclic antidepressant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mepramine. Yeah. Now, if you are a newborn girl with respiratory distress, polyhydraminia, blood pressure seventy over forty, pulse of one seventy six, exam shows nasal flaring, grunting, and barrel shaped chest with absent breath sounds on the left and fair aeration of the right lung mm -hmm. abdomen is a scaphoid what's best next step so let's say this patient has diaphragmatic hernia so if it's di diaphragmatic hernia then you are going to uh, I think you put an NG tube right you you decompress before you correct you know if there is any electrolyte abnormality and then uh, surgery so the first step in management of a newborn with respiratory compromise and suspected congenital diaphragmatic hernia is endotracheal intubation Okay. I'll go. Oh. Okay, and then you do castric tube to decompress the stomach and bowel. You're right. Mm -hmm. The common wrong answer is the bag and mask ventilation. Okay. okay. That's uh, wrong. Why? Because the flow will go to the bowel and worsen respiratory symptoms, which is not good. And right? the tracheal intubation. Yeah. Okay. Through the tracheal. Yeah. Okay. We intubate too if if the patient has distress, mm -hmm. tripod positioning, dysphagia, and drooling, thumbprint sign, loss of vallecular space on x-ray. Okay, we intubate that for epiglottitis, mm -hmm. which is caused by non typable or typable hemophilus, and strep mm -hmm. and staph, those are the causes. And the management keep the child calm, comfortable, with emergency intubation and operating room same thing now if you are six year old boy with poor weight gain and several bowel movements a day despite eliminating diary from your diet you've you've hospital you've been hospitalized yearly for pneumonia fecal occult blood test is negative and wheezing in both lungs when I look at the charts, there is there is declining chart growth. The growth chart is declining. So what is going on here? So wheezing pneumonia. Mm, yeah. 
and uh, poor growth. Do you say diarrhea too? Yeah. Mm. It's yeah, like several bowel movement a day, despite emanating diarrhea fluid. Yeah. Uh, the wisdom and the pneumonia, hmm, poor growth. What is it? This is not, it's not cystic fibrosis. Eh? No, no, it is cystic fibrosis. Is it? Yeah, so I would do, yeah, I would do the, a test called quantitative pilocarpine ionophoresis. Pilocarpine what? Ionophoresis. Really? Yeah, so this the same thing as a sweat chloride test, like it's another name. <coughs> <So. laughs> this is a baptismal name. Huh? I said this is another name. Pilocarpine um, ionophoresis. Okay. Yeah, the sweat testing by quantitative pilocarpine ionophoresis. Yeah, something. So, how do you diagnose it? Like, so this presentation they have bronchiectasis. Pancreatic insufficiency, meconium ileus, failure to thrive, salt loss syndrome. Okay, like it causes acute salt depletion, chronic metabolic alkalosis, male urogenital anomaly, ab obstructive azospermia. Diagnosis is one or more clinical feature or history of CF, cystic fibrosis, and sibling, positive in newborn screening test. An increased sweat chloride concentration more than 60 on two or more occasions or identification of two cystic fibrosis mutation or abnormal nasal epithelial ion transport potential difference okay okay so that's how you diagnose cystic fibrosis like so diagnosis okay Yeah, so other clinical features of cystic, they can have respiratory problem, which is obstructive lung disease, recurrent pneumonia, chronic rhinosinusitis. GI symptoms, obstructive, like meconium ileus and distal intestinal obstruction syndrome, or it can cause pancreatic, like exocrine pancreatic deficiency or GI-related diabetes. Cystic fibrosis, uh, uh, those can, can damage the pancreas, or it can cause biliary cirrhosis. Reproductive issues, infertility in 95% of male, 20% of female, and musculoskeletal problem. What are the musculoskeletal problem with cystic fibrosis? Musculoskeletal problems? Mm -hmm. With cystic fibrosis? Yeah. They can have osteopenia risk for fracture, you can mm. have kyphoscoliosis and digital okay. clubbing. Okay. They have a lot of questions on cystic fibers. Okay. So what behavior is concerning in a young child? Sexual behavior what is the abnormal sexual behavior in pre-adolescence? Oh, I think uh, is it when they play with a toy and play with the you know genital area, and um, when they like when they play with a toy and then you know touching the genital area or something like that. Oh. Yeah, so we have normal behaviors, for example. Mm -hmm. ex ex Exploring own or other genitalia, masturbatory movement, and addressing self or others and toddler. In a school age, there's increased in interest in sex words and play, asking questions about sex and reproducting. Masturbatory movement may become more sophisticated. I, u I used to ask these questions and they used to make fun of me. No one would answer me. Uh, how's things working? <laughs> Yeah, took me a while to figure out. <laughs> yeah, abnormal behaviors like repeated object insertion into vagina or anus, 
sex play involving genital genital oral genital or anal genital contact use of force threats or bribes in sex play age and appropriate sexual knowledge so those are the things that concern me okay mm -hmm. five-year-old girl talking to herself what is your diagnosis is um is normal yeah normal You know, it's funny, one time I had a, uh, like a friend who was like in a, in a psychiatric department, so it wasn't, mm -hmm. they had a lot of like Somali patients and stuff, so it's like kind of spiritual, like religious, they just talked, pray and stuff, so the nurses used to write, like they talk to themselves, like they, they are hallucinating and stuff, <laughs> so this guy told them, man, like this is okay, this is normal. Mm. Oh, they were praying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now, if you are a five-year-old girl who screams at night, crying, sweating, frightening, but you don't recall the dream, what is your diagnosis? If they don't recall it, then it's um, sleep terror, non-REM. Yeah. Yeah. Nightmare. Recall. It. That's important. Mm -hmm. What are the side effects of methylphenidate? Oh my! Side effects of methylphenidate. Of course. Um. So this is for ADHD. It can cause um. Uh, poor, poor um, weight gain. What do you call it? Yeah. Poor weight gain. They can. They have a decreased it appetite. It can cause insomnia. Yeah, insomnia, Nerv decreased appetite. Nervousness, weight loss, insomnia, mm -hmm. abdominal pain. Mm -hmm. Those are. The... Okay, now, uh, this guy, he sets fires. So what are the, <laughs> it's a pyromania, everybody knows that. So what are the DSM-5 criteria for pyromania? I don't know what it is, but what's the DSM criteria? I lost you. What is it? What did you say? No, I said they just like to set fires that get I don't I don't I can I can just, you know, like tell you Vabat and this is what it is. But yeah, I know so it's it's fire setting on more than one occasion, number one. Uh, tension arousal prior to the act and they have fascination with fire and its consequences pleasure or relief when setting witnessing fire and no external gain revenge political motivation not done to attract attention and not better explained by conductive disorder manic episode psychosis antisocial personality impaired judgment or other substance intoxication of neurocognitive disorder. Okay, now new case, 17 year old female with erythema on her turbinate and nasal mucosa. What substance abuse is there? Cocaine. Wow, smart, yeah. She's a picky eater and she has all this cocaine good stuff, you know them, right? <laughs> okay. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, this is an interesting case. Young mother bring a five-year-old daughter. So she's doing very well at home, but at school she's very shy and doesn't interact with others. What is your diagnosis? Selective mutism. Excellent. Okay, Tourette syndrome and increased risk for OCD, we know that. Okay, now, five hour old girl, when I palpate the left clavicular bone, it shows crepitus. So, what's your diagnosis? Five hour? Oh, okay, show the um, oh, clavicle, um, uh, what do you call it? Fracture, show the, show the dystocia, something like that. 
Yeah, so the risk factors is fetal macrosomia, mm -hmm. maternal diabetes, post-term pregnancy, mm -hmm. instrumental delivery, vacuum or forceps, shoulder mm -hmm. dystocia. Clinical feature, they have crying, mm -hmm. pain with passive motion of affected extremity, crepitus of mm -hmm. clavicle, asymmetric moro reflex, diagnosis mm -hmm. by x-ray, treatment, reassurance, gent gentle handling, analgesics and place affected arm in a long sleeved garment and pin the sleeve to the chest with elbow flex at 90 degree <coughs> okay that's not it mm -hmm. mm, sorry now uh, so what are the increased risk uh, so small gestational baby who's a small for gestational age weight under 10th percentile what are the complications for this condition complications yeah what are the complications of small gestational age preterm having them preterm uh, when you say complications is it like what caused it or what is going to happen to the baby preterm or is, is what i so this is an important question they can they are increased risk for polycythemia Mm -hmm. for hypoglycemia, mm -hmm. hypothermia, hypocalcemia, and hypoxia. Mm -hmm. that's, that's right. Mm -hmm. Those are yeah. the things. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a good case. I think I saw this case on the exam. Similar one, yeah. A three-year-old son, three-year-old boy, presented with vomiting, abdominal pain, coffee ground, emesis blood pressure is 80 over 50 bicarbonate is 18 but what's gonna give it away the abdominal imaging shows radio opaque tablet in the stomach so how do you treat that okay so I'm thinking this is a iron pill poisoning so you do uh, what do you call it um, charcoal, is it charcoal is that what you do? You do diforaxamine, yeah, good job. Yeah, diforaxamine, yeah. Yeah, so that's about it. Now, so if you're a two-month-old female with white reflex on the right eye, so what should I do? Oh, okay, this might be retinoblastoma. Yeah. So you have to mm -hmm. refer to ophthalmologist. Wow, good job. So, four-year-old boy brought for routine health exam. What should you do right now? Four-year-old mm -hmm. routine exam. So, in this exam, four-year-old, you're gonna check. I think you're gonna do eye exam. <laughs> I don't wow. know about here. Yeah. Wow! 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 It looks like you're reading my mind. Yeah, good job. <laughs> I'm reading your mind. I'm picking your brain. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, you you know what I what I like what I'm asking. Good job. I'm picking yeah. your brain. <laughs> yeah, so eye exam after three years old, we start doing eye exam. Okay, twelve year old male child difficulty concentrating, <laughs> stares in a space for a few seconds, and appears totally absorbed in his thoughts what's next step um so if this is absent seizures yeah so then we do EKG. you're gonna do um okay now uh, 11 year old girl so this is absence right absent seizure yeah okay 11 year old girl have severe headache that's bright bi bifrontal but it's worse on the right side she has dark spots okay while watching tv pupil uh reactive to light so what do you do now so th if this is migraine headache for kids at that age really you treat them with insects so this kids 
with migraine. How about migraine in adults? Oh, no, in adults, um, of course, if you're going to treat acutely, so you can give them, um, what do you call it? Um, um, what is this thing again? Tryptin, tryptins. You can do tryptins. You can do a gonad, is it a gonad, a gonavin, a gonad, whatever you call that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And then if you want to do like um, prophylaxis, you can do things like um, beta, uh, a calcium channel blocker, uh, propanolol, what else? Um, uh, what, top pyramids, you know, those ones, yeah. Yeah, calcium channel blocker is a prophylaxis for cluster, more likely. Okay, that's the thing. Propanolol is more for migraine. Migraine. Yeah, okay, so if you are a five-year-old boy, Who's, who's not acting right according to his parents he has headache vomited it twice left pupil is larger than the right CT shows epidural hematoma how, how do you treat that? yeah you have to do surgery you want to yeah, emergency, evacuate yeah, emergency craniotomy yeah, emergency craniotomy. How do you differentiate fetal alcohol syndrome from down from fragile X syndrome in terms of facial features and body? Please don't ask me that. That's a lot of things you have okay, to say. <laughs> so fetal al I'll tell you about it. Fetal alcohol. So this is very important comparison. Fetal alcohol syndrome, they have a smooth philtrum, thin mm -hmm. vermilion border, small palpebral fissure, and microcephaly. Those are the features mm -hmm. in, in fetal alcohol syndrome. While Down syndrome, they have flat facial profile and slanted palpebral fissure, not small. Like small in fetal alcohol syndrome, but down slanted. And there's small low set ears in Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. The body of Down syndrome, there's a skin at the nape of the neck, single transverse palmar crease, clinodactyly, and large space between the first two toes. Fragile X syndrome on the face is long, narrow face, prominent forehead and chin, large ears, microcephaly, and the body, there's a microarchidism in the body. Mm -hmm. okay, so that's the fragile. Now, if you're an 18-month-old infant mm -hmm. who had repeated vomiting and hypotonia, okay, and you started pinching yourself, uric acid is elevated. What's next step? Or what's diagnosis? 18 months, vomiting, hypotonia. Yeah, pinching. Elevated uric acid. Yeah, pinching yourself. Oh, pinching or, or self-mutilation <laughs> is a Lechnihan syndrome. Yeah, hypoxanthine, guanine, phosphoribosyl transferase deficiency. Deficiency. HGPRT. Lechnihan. Lechnihan syndrome cause mental retard, chorioethidosis. Gouty arthritis, tophus formation. Now, if you were a 17 year old boy who began threatening abusive and had palpable n tissue underneath nipple, okay, and acne on your forehead, back, hairline mm -hmm. is receding, what is mm -hmm. that? Steroid. Yeah, this abuse. Yeah, yeah. Anabolic steroid, yeah. yeah. Anabolic steroid. Now, if you're a 12 year old boy with the flaccid paralysis and upset deep tendon reflexes and decreased superficial touch and vibratory sense of both legs, upper extremities weak and hyporeflexic, what's the diagnosis? Hmm. After 17. After a diarrheal illness, so this is good, good embarrassing. Oh, you are so funny. <laughs> it's GBS. 
yeah, yeah. Use the GPS to go. Okay, let's let's go. Now, if you are a seven-year-old boy with very poor attention span and a prominent jaw with large testicle. Fragile S. Yeah, CGG mutation. Mm -hmm. So there's a mnemonic is very was funny like C G G is for the two testes that are big and C I think I don't know what it was for maybe concentration something yeah. <laughs> but I remember the testicle part uh, for mm -hmm. some reason C G G yeah <laughs> Okay. Now, wow, these things, I used to confuse them for some reason. Four year old <laughs> boy mm -hmm. with co who had complained of constant hunger and temper tantrum. You refuse when, when your parent, when his parents refuse to give him additional snacks. On exam, there is narrow forehead, downturned mouth, almond-shaped eyes, small hands and feet. He has a low muscle tone and micro phallus. Hunger, temper tantrum, mm. Prada Willy syndrome. Yeah, it's a loss of pattern of copy of 15, Q11, Q13. Mm. Clinical mm -hmm. features, hypotonia, weak, suck, hyperphagia, obesity, short stature, hypogonadism, intellectual disability, dysmorphic faces, narrow forehead, almond-shaped mm -hmm. eyes, and downturned mouth. Mm -hmm. Complication, they have sleep apnea, type 2 diabetes, gastric distension and rupture, mm -hmm. and death by choking. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, if you're an eight-year-old girl, evaluated for short stature and cardiotype XO, so you're at increased risk for osteoporosis. That's Tana what. syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you are a two-year-old boy, is it is it because they don't have estrogen? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you were a two-year-old two boy with a productive cough... How old? Two-year-old. Mm-hmm. Productive cough, low-grade fever. And they have the x-ray picture. The right sitting, the heart sitting on the right side. Gastrocardia? Yeah, this is Cartagener syndrome. Mm-hmm. What type of edema and Turner syndrome? What type of edema in Turner syndrome? Like the cyst, is it the uh, cystic hygro something? Yeah, and they have congenital lymph edema due to abnormal development of the lymphatic system. Plus nail dysplasia, central pedal edema, carpal pedal edema, and horseshoe kidney, webbed neck. Those are the manifestations. Okay, now, if you're an 11 year old boy with upward dislocation of the lens and joint height. 11 year old boy? Yeah, with upward. With what? Upward lens dislocation. Upward, okay. And joint hypermobility. Mm hmm. What is that? Marfan syndrome? Yeah, mutation fibrillin 1 gene. Mm hmm. Now, if you have a thigh atrophy, bilateral calf enlargement. Thigh atrophy? Yeah, bilateral calf enlargement. Bilateral calf? Yeah, what's next step? What is calf? Calf. Like coughing? Calf, C A L F, calf enlargement. Calf pseudo hypertrophy. C this is Duchenne. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This okay, dishing, all right. Dishing. Got it. Okay, let's do a rapid review on what we did for this hour. Mm -hmm. Then. Uh, 
or you know what? Okay, let's do rapid review for this. Yeah, let's do, let's do just rapid, very rapid. Okay, court order for Ayalal. Oh, let me see. How's that gonna work? Let me just position. We have the comfortable position to move the papers first. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this is social isolation risk factor for child abuse. Um, we talked about the radial head subluxation, leg calf perthes disease. How does that cause left hip and left knee pain in 13 year old boy? We talked about Lyme disease, migratory arthritis, osteonecrosis, Kawasaki aneurysm. We talked about onion skinning, osteodastioma. Sorry, sunburst pattern. Onion skinning and earwings are common, but sunburst pattern and osteodastioma. We talked about ultrasound for hip dysplasia. And we talked about tracheal traction of opposites, Osgood Schlatter disease, and then discussed genovarum, rickets, and Atlanta axial instability in down, and prednisone for minimal change, and hypokalemia and vomiting, plus pulmonary hypoplasia and Potter's and And then we talked about when do we do ultrasound when there's recurrent UTI in children. And in uresis, we start with behavioral first, and then alarm, and then desmopressin, and then TCA. In the tracheal intubation for hernia, diaphragmatic hernia. Cystic fibrosis causes infertility and kyphoscoliosis. Uh, using uh, sex play with mm -hmm. genital genital that's uh, concerning for child abuse screaming without remembering that's in terror decreased appetite with methylphenidate cocaine erythema erythematous nose OCD with torrid clavicular fracture management is by the uh, long sleeved garment, polycythemia with small for gestational age, diphoroxamine for radio opaque in the stomach, refer to ophthalmology when there's a white eye, vision test for a three year old boy, EEG for absence. Then we talked about the ibuprofen for migraine kids, craniotomy for a epidural. Small palpebra pressure for fetal hydantoin and Lange Nehine syndrome and anabolic abuse plus GPS. Then we talked about the CGG and fragile X syndrome plus the hunger and small hand and feet and almond shaped eyes and downturned mouth with an or Prader Willi syndrome. We talked about osteop Turner osteoporosis and Cartagener syndrome dextrocardia. Plus Turner lymph dysgenesis and fibrillin one marfan plus genetic for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Okay, so now this is end of the third session of the PID. Let's take five, ten minutes, ten minutes, and then we will, five, ten minutes, something like that, and then we will continue the fourth, hopefully the last one.